Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tech Champions. I'm your host, Daniel Beatty, CTO with AuditMax in Jacksonville, Florida. As you know, we take time each week to sit down with thought leaders and industry experts. We hear about their journey and get their take on the latest trends in the industry. We always have amazing guests on the show, and today is no exception. Joining us from Walsall, Wisconsin is Tim Dively. Hello, Tim. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. I'm uh, glad, glad you could come on. So I know, um, let's start with just you giving a little bit of your history and your kind of journey to this point. Uh, I know you're the CTO, sure. CO, COO at People State Bank there in Wisconsin, uh, but give us a yep. little bit of a uh, little bit of your background. Sure. Right after college, uh, I started as a, a level one technician at a help desk for a major insurance company. And throughout my time there, I just continued other technical areas, including Unix server admin, hardware and software support. And then I moved into the, the business and operations side of IT, um, supporting several different business units within the same insurance company. Um, at that point, I was kind of intrigued um, on a little bit more on the business side than, than just on the tech side. So I went back and I got my, my MBA and then eventually came to a point in my career where I wanted a little bit more than when, what I was able to achieve at that current employer um, because what we were supporting was a, a runoff organization. And I'd been a customer of people's for many, many years. And so I knew the culture, I knew the commitment to the customer and, and the communities that I lived in. And um, I was able to gauge as a customer how leading edge they were in technology and digital. Um, I was blessed to, to get the role that I'm currently in. And so the rest is, the rest is kind of history, as they say. Yeah, I know. That's, that's great. Um, that's exciting. It's funny. I, I actually started my IT career on a help desk as well. So for a big law firm in downtown Atlanta, wore the, wore the headset and supported attorneys. And I Absolutely. always say, if, if you can support 500 attorneys, you can support anybody. <laughs> so, Amen uh, on that one. It's Yeah. It's a great way to learn too. The, so the help desk was, it's interesting. We both kind of started there. So the, the pandemic, uh, Tim is, you know, it's starting to wind down, which is great. I think everybody's excited yeah. about that, but t uh, talk for a couple minutes about how the community banking industry uh, was disrupted um, from COVID-19. Yeah. You know, I, I think um, the disruption allowed us all to see how sound our pandemic planning and, and business continuity plans really were. Um, this was the, the best tabletop test that you could ever perform, um, but it was it was live, and so I would say, kind of at first, it was slow, and I don't think community banking is any different than anybody else, and that none of us knew how long this might last. You know, so you had to start having conversations directly with our customers, with our vendors, our employees, community leaders, to make sure that we could support the unknown as we kind of all navigated through this, but. Um, I don't think any of us realized the the length of what this was going to be. It was like, do we really need to talk about this? This is probably probably going to be good by the end of April. Um, but we knew that we had to commit to it. And so I think that from a, a community banking industry, um, you know, we, we were able to shine as we look back on it a year later. Um, but there there was, you know, some disruption into, you know, traditional processes, especially as we look at Wisconsin. You know, we had a safer at home order where basically everything was shut down um, with the exception of essential workers and essential businesses, which, you know, thankfully we were we were a part of that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I remember sitting at the dining room table with my family and when all the charts came out and I was like, OK, I got this. And my professional opinion is that we're going to be done in a month. Right. So, and I yep. was obviously dead wrong on that. But um so yeah, it, you're right. Nobody knew um, what things were going to look like, but it sounds like you guys were were able to to not just survive but but thrive uh, during that as well. So that's great. Um, let's yep. let's talk a little bit about part of that's customer service, right? And and I bank right. with a, a local credit union, Vistar, here in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. and um, had had the opportunity to interact with them in person and the drive through, and then um, in an app, and so a variety of different ways, but. Talk a little bit sure. about how customer service in the banking industry has has changed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I can only speak to community banks. And, you know, I, I think the the first thing as it relates to 
customer service and, and, and community banking is that, you know, I think all community banks sh should be applauded, not just for the digital solutions that they implemented um, with the help of their core providers and other fintechs, but because of the support they provided to the small businesses who were so hard hit by the pandemic, you know, we kind of all rallied together for the, for the common good in that. And it wasn't, you know, community bank A versus community bank B, even if you're in the same, you know, general geographic location, we all had to support our communities. And I think that that's where our customer service shown, you know, throughout this process. And um, it's kind of funny, whenever you talk about customer service, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone in banking or any sort of service industry that that wouldn't say that their customer service is, is their differentiator. But I think that for us, um, in a lot of the areas that that we're in is, you know, we let the numbers speak for themselves, the amount of community hours that we had. And it was really difficult for us to, to find places that we could um, support the community outside of, um, you know, allowing for fees to go away on certain things. Um, but the government provided some sort of a blueprint for us. It was a, a, a bit unorganized, as you can imagine, we all kind of were. But I think that that's how our customer service shown a little bit, like I said before, and that is that you're talking to a person, you're talking to a banker, you were um, getting a, a virtual appointment to where they could you know, see your face, they could look at those sorts of things. And that's, that's the thing that I, I hope never changes about customer service, you know, that attention to detail and the relationships that we we've established through this. And um, I'm sure that that many community banks now have, you know, lifelong customers because of the help that we've um, we were able to provide to our communities and, and the small businesses specifically. Yeah, no, that, that's great. I mean, you make a good point, Tim. You know, most of us had to, you know, pivot and adjust, but we were just doing our regular jobs. Um, Correct. Banking, banking had to do that and innovate um, while they were, um, while they had additional workloads. So with all the new, the loans and things like that and helping with the PPP yep. and things of that nature. So, you didn't just have to do what you had done for years. You had to do brand new things along the way. So you had a lot exactly. at you. So yeah, and that, that's great. We, we applaud you guys for that, for sure. Um, are your customers finding it hard to adapt or are they just kind of are rolling with things? You know, I, I, that's always an interesting question because whenever, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily equate myself as a, as a banker, but that timeline on that, being able to use that excuse is kind of wearing out a little bit. But from a, a technology perspective, you know, we always want things to be adopted faster than, than they are. Um, I always talk about the, the days of we would all know on the calendar when the Pentium 1 processor was coming out and the Pentium 2 processor. And I can't tell you what the processor name and, and, and the chipset speed is in any of those things anymore. And because it's exponentially faster than it ever was before. So um, sometimes a situation like a pandemic allows for that adoption to um, begrudgingly happen faster than, you know, a regular environment could ever allow it to happen. And so, um, you know, I'm reluctant to say that I'm thankful for anything as it relates to COVID, but um, our customers and, and a lot of customers out there were able to become more digital centric than they've ever been before out of necessity. And nothing more. And so sometimes that's okay, right? And we we had customers that if you were to poll us and say, it, would this demographic of customer ever adopt this? It would be like absolutely not. But they do, and it, and it's yeah. surprising. And so look, look at the data, look at the behaviors, and make your decisions based off of that. So I would say, yeah, there's always going to be customers that don't want to adapt to that. And that's what we can do at a community bank because we can still support them in that. But boy, there's a lot of folks that, that are like, why didn't I do this sooner? Right. No, oh, that's a good, that's a good point. And, you know, sometimes the, the customers are pushing for the innovations faster than they're available because we get spoiled by other technologies. So, um, right. any, any other thoughts, Tim, or innovations that you'd like to share with our audience? Yeah. I, I mean, I think for us, it's, don't discount the power of the, the agile mindset in practice. Um, you know, we, we talk about being agile a lot of times because that's a, you know, it's a buzzword, but, you know, kind of celebrating the, the 20th anniversary of the, the agile manifesto, you know, I mean, go back and look to see how 
how correct that was and how much value was there. Yeah, it was kind of derived from software development, but being able to anticipate and adapt um, and creating that culture where you're not afraid to to fail. Let's let's try some things. And I think when I brought up that that principle in banking, it, it's it's hard for those traditional folks to look at that and be like, well, we can't fail. Um, but looking at it for what it is, as we're talking about some of the digital practices that are out there, we're not talking about failing and having us, you know, lose people's money or their information or anything like that. But it's trying something that that you hope that comes out one way and it doesn't, and then you're able to adapt to that um, and make a change and not have to to start all over. So there's lots of things about innovation that's super exciting. The pace is is unbelievable, but you know you've got to embrace disruption. You got to look forward to it, and you got to be able to anticipate and uh, and adapt. And um, that that's probably my biggest thing as it relates around around innovation is not specific technologies because I don't know what's going to be there in in six months. Um, right. But you just got to be prepared to to take that journey and and take a little bit of a risk. Yeah, I love it. Okay, that's great. And and Tim, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. It's been really insightful. Sure. Um, love the love what you shared with our audience. If people wanted to reach out and find you, um, what was the best way? Would it be LinkedIn? Do you have a website or email you'd like to give us? Yep. Uh, LinkedIn would be the, the best thing. Um, I don't know how many Tim Dibleys are out there, but um, I do have the MBA at the, at the end of my uh, my name there. So um, look for this mug and, and, and you'll find it. <laughs> okay, that's great. Well, thanks again, Tim, for being on the show. People State Bank, really appreciate it. Um, and have been very insightful. And to our audience, thank you for joining. I'm your host, Daniel Beatty. We'll see you next time on Tech Champions.